Good morning. This is Chip Kose here with the uh, NOLA Brain Injury Support and Resources official Facebook group. Uh, no, I'm not a doctor, so I want to get that out first uh, and foremost and let you know that I'm not here to diagnose a brain injury. I'm not here to treat a brain injury. In fact, I'm a personal injury attorney in New Orleans, Louisiana. So you might be thinking to yourself, well, why on earth is a personal injury attorney uh, doing videos about brain injuries? Uh, and there's a good reason for that, because I've been litigating these types of cases for over a decade. And uh, by doing that, I've developed lots of resources that have been available to my clients through this litigation that I thought would be helpful and useful for everyone. So I thought I'd start out today about um, you know dispelling some myths about brain injuries, kind of explaining what a brain injury is, and talking about a few other items. Uh, first of all, a brain injury is a disruption of the normal brain function. Um, it doesn't mean you have to be in a wheelchair or um, not able to comprehend certain things or be able to understand what you read. It just means that there's certain areas of your cognition or your brain function and its ability to work right that are impaired because of damage that has occurred. Most often it's a, it occurs as a result of trauma. One of the biggest problems that um, or reasons why I, I'm doing these videos is because uh, there's a lot of things I've seen in my practice which actually get people on the wrong track and think that there isn't a problem when in fact there is. Um, and the reason why I did that is because uh, most people that have a legitimate brain injury, it's not even properly screened most of the time by initial medical personnel. In fact, a recent study was, was done where a group of nearly 2,000 people that had brain injuries, uh, their medical records were collected and their emergency room visits were examined and it turns out that the screening showed that they had perfectly normal brain function and the reason for that is because you know these emergency room doctors they're they're simply there to make sure you're not going to die that day that you don't have any internal bleeding or broken bones and these screenings that they're doing they're not a full neurological screening it's an emergency doc room doctors screening so it's very cursory and many times very inaccurate um, and then the other thing is that people have a lot of misconceptions about what a brain injury is and what causes them. So I wanted to um, kind of introduce you to the fact that there are multiple types of brain injuries. Um, most often it's a mild brain injury. These are things like concussions and things that happen in everyday life, whether you fall, um, you're in a car accident, you have uh, your, your son or daughter is, is involved in sports. It can happen very easily but it is a brain injury and there are permanent effects from this that can alter the brain function. So it's very important that even in a mild brain injury scenario, you want to be very vigilant if you are a parent or a significant other to watch the habits and behaviors of the affected person to determine whether or not they are having memory problems, comprehension problems, even if they have personality changes. Those are usually big signs and symptoms of a potential brain injury. Of course, the next <clears throat> most worst one would be a moderate, and that's just you know, slightly worse than mild, but not as, as bad as severe. And then you have the severe ones, which are the ones where people would be um, unable to, to learn new things at all, not comprehend what they've learned the previous day, not care for themselves, the, the kind you generally think about when you think of a brain injury. So uh, I thought now I would dispel some myths about brain injury. Well, the biggest one is that you know you have to hit your head, and that's just simply not true. Um, a great example of that would be a whiplash type accident where your head accelerates and then decelerates, uh, whether it's a car accident or you fall off a bike or whatever. When your head whips back and forth, what happens is the, the brain smacks the inside of the skull, and that kind of trauma can cause the axons, which are kind of like the telephone wires in your, of your brain, and they carry information from one area to the other, those can either become twisted or even broken. And then that information ceases to go back and forth. So it's important to identify the area because with the additional knowledge we now have about the brain and that these doctors are really researching heavily now, they can determine that the area of the brain is responsible for certain cognition or learning or memory or daily functions. So it's very important to have those diagnostic tools at your hand, uh, in your hands 
to be able to identify exactly what area of the brain has been adversely affected. And then the second largest myth is that you have to lose consciousness in order to sustain a brain injury. The best example I could think of was a few years ago the actor Liam Neeson his wife, Natasha Richardson, was skiing on a bunny slope, the little bitty ones that you kind of, you know, you train on with your children and things. And she just, she fell. She didn't strike her head. She didn't lose consciousness. They asked her if she was okay. She said she was fine. The next day she died. And when they examined her body, they determined that she did indeed have a brain injury. So that's a few of the things that we I just wanted to cover cursorily because in future videos we're going to talk about you know, some of the, speci the specifics in terms of what you can do to screen for it, to treat it, to diagnose it, and if you are the caretaker of a loved one or a friend or a spouse that has a brain injury, what you can do to enhance their lives so it can be the fullest they can be and also make you aware of things you can do to assist them. And there's many uh, remedies now that really weren't around five or ten years ago. So while the, um, the research and the medicine in this area is very exciting, the general public doesn't know too much about it. And so that was my hope in terms of sharing that with you. Thanks so much. We'll talk again soon.